The following podcast may contain adult language and an abundance of salt. So get ready, nerds, because we're talking Peacemaker, Episode 5, Monkey Dory. Welcome, everybody, and thank you so much for joining us. Today, we're talking about Peacemaker's new Episode 5, Monkey Dory. I'm joined, as always, by my fantastic panel of nerds. Matt Vader is here. Welcome, Hi. sir. Hi, how are you? I'm doing fine. How are you? I'm lubed, and I'm ready to go. <laughs> okay, good. I, th- I think. Oh, I'm did gonna, you bring I, your luber I, I, No, that was that was for last week's episode. <laughs> <laughs> Jude is also here. Welcome. Hello, ambassador of estrogen. How are you doing today? I'm good. How are you? Excellent. And this drink is also excellent. So we actually made the drink from the episode of Peacemaker. No, My we did not make that drink. Come on. That was called a peace train. It is gin, vermouth, vinegar, peppercorn, a little maple syrup, and some yak butter. I made my own drink. You made your own drink? You I was have, under the impression. You could drink something with yak butter in it? I would have for the, the show. The, the drink on the episode had like vinegar and yak butter yeah. in it. I'm not oh. making that for you. I thought, I totally thought you made the drink from the show. No, I mean, I mean, it also had gin in it. So I guess it's a variation. This is, also, the drink from the show was disgusting. So, yeah. I know. That's kind of what I thought we were going to go for today. <laughs> I was this, like, this, this is our own. This is our own version no, of a peacemaker. I only do that for invasion. Oh, okay. Make you drink things that are terrible. <laughs> yeah, right. What was that called? The freaking uh, uh, the wajo juice. The, the wajo, wajo juice. juice. <laughs> Dude, it had like black licorice yes, shit in it. Yes, it did. It was and a little really, alien on the side. Yeah, a little that, was, that was actually really cool. a lot of effort. That was into adorable. It. <laughs> she like soaked licorice chunks and made them into little squids. I it was ridiculous. Soaked <laughs> things in gin for this. Yeah. <laughs> that sounded weird. I soaked oranges in gin for this. I'm soaked in gin for this episode. We're always oh. soaked in gin. What are you talking gin about? Gin soaked floozy. <laughs> Kadish is also here. Welcome, sir. Good to be here. All right. Episode five of Peacemaker. Guys, it's going to be heavy spoilers from here on out. So if you haven't seen the episode, go watch it. Then you can come back. We're going to take a quick break, and then we're going to dive super deep into this episode. Welcome back, everybody. Hey, if you want to support the podcast, go to saltynerdclub.com. That is where the good stuff is. $5 a month gets you access to a ton of extra content. You get four exclusive podcasts every single month. Month of February, we're doing Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Last month, we did Doctor Who. Month before that, we did that. that the was month awesome. before that, we did The Foundation from Apple TV. And uh, who knows what we're going to do in the future. So head over to the club membership and uh, help support the podcast and get some awesome stuff in return. All right. Matthew Kadish, take it away, sir. What is this episode all about? All right, Peacemaker, Season 1, Episode 5, entitled Monkey Dory. Peacemaker wakes up from his bender from the night before and is feeling down. Eagly tries to cheer him up by bringing him a freshly killed squirrel. Leota's wife wants to come back and stay with her, but Leota is frazzled with her new job and is keeping her wife at bay. Later, she gets a cryptic text from Amanda Waller asking if she's placed the diary at Peacemaker's yet, making Leota look conflicted. Mern then briefs the team on what butterflies are, assisted by a PowerPoint presentation made by Economos. We learn that butterflies are an alien race that can enter a host through an orifice and take them over. They have been found in a handful of politicians, celebrities, and titans of industry. The butterflies are also able to give their host enhanced strength and abilities. Mern identifies an amber fluid as the butterfly's only food source and reveals Leota's discovery of the Glan Thai Bottling Company as the potential source for the amber fluid butterfly food. Before the briefing is over, Peacemaker has an argument with Economos, showing he's still upset over the framing of his father. Um. We all smirked when they said the orifices thing. Mm-hmm. The, slide, the slide, the slideshow bit where he had the the picture of the cartoon dude <laughs> bent over and the butterfly yeah. was going up his asshole. I was like, oh. everybody should be wearing face coverings and butt plugs. Yeah, listen, man, that that whole scene where Cena <laughs> was giving Die Beard shit about his terrible PowerPoint, PowerPoint presentation. presentation. That was my favorite part of the whole episode. Was it? It really, it really was. It was. I feel funny. like that's you talking to Kadish. I. I probably could do that right now. I, I don't even know why. I'm just like, I need to f- find my zen. It's right the vodka. Now. Maybe it's making you it's aggressive. Vodka. The vodka. out the Russian in there. Like, it's just, you need to chill the fuck out, man. <laughs> Tell me what to do one more time. Mm-hmm. I will fucking out. kill you. <laughs> I, I am very chill right now. Do I not look calm? <laughs> Cut your that happens in this episode, right? I think that's when he says I, that. I, I do love it when, when um, you know, people are like, oh. They don't go up the butt. And he's like, what? The butt's an orifice. Yeah. <laughs> I, I was co- just trying to find an orifice. <laughs> to cover my bases. <laughs> I totally prefer Diebeard than Economos. Uh, it's a much funnier name. Mm-hmm. And, Rolls um, off the tongue. Yeah, Diebeard. And yeah. it's so accurate. <laughs> well, it, it's funny because Leota gives uh, gives Peacemaker um, 
you know, a little bit of guff about picking on Economos so much. And, and he's, he's like, Hey, I know what it was like to be bullied. And she was like, you were bullied. He's like, yeah, all the kids I was mean to growing up, you know, they used, <laughs> used to, to call, call me a bully, bully and it <laughs> hurt my feelings. <laughs> That's why they got bullied. Well, there, there's a bit in this about like nicknaming people off the shape of their penis. Was that, did we talk about that already? No, not, yet. not yet. Okay. We'll get there. That not, was, well, I mean, we can talk about it now. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's, that was one of the Is funnier moments for me. Y'all's childhood trauma. Penis jokes. I hated the boys' locker room in high school. You did. I hated I think, that I think place. Every every boy hates the boys. Oh, locker room I think every school. human hates the locker room, well, whether you're I a mean, boy or you, a girl. You, you hate the locker room if you don't got anything hanging. <laughs> then you, then you just you know then people make fun of you for having a little dick. locker room. Did you go to <laughs> in school? This guy's like fucking. Love the locker room. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I spent all my time in the boys' <laughs> locker room. <laughs> like I was the king of the goddamn. <laughs> locker room. I let my shit low, man. <laughs> just swing it around the locker room. What's the matter with you, pussy? <laughs> <laughs> all the kids used to call me a bully. It hurt yeah. my feelings. There's a lot of a lot of nicknames get coming from the locker like, room. They gave me a wide berth. <laughs> it's true. Because it was always hitting people in the face. <laughs> you guys obviously just never trying seen to me. watch the showers. They, could, they called me pendulum in high school <laughs> you guys obviously never watched porkies growing up right <laughs> this mom dad this is my boyfriend they call him grandfather Clark. <laughs> right just don't don't mm -hmm. walk by the lockers bro yeah you had a good time in high school didn't you <laughs> no not really <laughs> not really i, I, I would not go back high school I, I can barely remember it. It was so long ago. <laughs> <laughs> Too busy going out into the woods and getting it's on vendors. It's been 87 yeah. years. <laughs> this, this was also the scene where Peacemaker, so like he, he was very upset that his father got framed and uh, Die Beer was like, what did you want me to do? He's like, you could have framed literally anyone. Else. Oh and he starts this is listing. So funny. It's all these random <laughs> yeah. people and celebrities. Taylor Swift, Khloe Kardashian, the Red Tiger from Voltron, Fran Tarkenton, Joe Montana, Joe Montana, Mariska Hargitay, Mario, Super Mario, fucking Luigi. <laughs> See, this is that bit was funny. I I do agree with you guys, but this is the one thing I have a problem with this this show in particular, and I probably just James Gunn's like way of doing humor mm -hmm. is like. It was funny for like a minute and then they yeah. went longer well that's his, and that's longer his thing. and, and I, I, that's it kills it for me it was like yeah it was funny for that like 30 it's, seconds it's, it's, it's straight out of guardians of the galaxy well, well, they do the same kind of shit it's, it's also the mike myers um yeah. comedic torture thing where it's like you 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 bring a joke further than you should mm -hmm. to the point where it's not funny but then that makes it funny <laughs> even funnier yeah. Yeah. yeah i get it i love it I it's really know, funny man. I don't it's, know, like, I, it's like no difference than like hemsworth and uh um, Star Lord dude doing, doing the, the voice doing thing. the voice thing. Chris Pratt. Are Chris Pratt. Yeah, are yeah. you mimicking my voice? <laughs> no. no. <laughs> it's, it's the same humor. It's it's. I enjoy it. I like uh, it. I guess. And, I, and John Cena ad lib like a good portion of that. That yeah. scene where was like just listing <laughs> just names. listing names off. It was a funny bit. I I, I think maybe I'm. I'm not liking the, the, what did you call it? Torture by humor? Uh, comedic torture. All right. All right. What happens next, Mr. Kadish? <laughs> All right. Speaking of Peacemaker's father, the white dragon finally gets to meet with the detectives, Song and Fitzgibbon, and tells them that he was framed and to check his fingerprints again. After double checking the white dragon's prints, the detectives discover that the white dragon was telling the truth and the prints from the crime scene don't match. They go to talk to the witnesses and discover that they were bribed to finger the white dragon. That sounded dirty. That sounded really dirty. <laughs> um, I bet she did, though. <laughs> <laughs> My favorite bit in this part was actually because we all know that the uh, what's the his dad's name? His actual not White Dragon, but it's actually his actual dad. Dad, the dad, Peacemaker's dad, Robert Patrick. Um, God damn it! <laughs> he, uh, Have you seen this boy? Huge racist <laughs> in this show, right? Yes. He's over here going like, you know, I do like your noodles, though. <laughs> Yeah. That caught me off guard. Yeah, I, I wasn't expecting him to say that, and it freaking cracked me up. Yeah, the rice face, nice, and, nice and light. Yeah, <laughs> calls, her, calls her Lucy Lou. Yeah. <laughs> she starts calling him all the white dude names or whatever. It's like, listen, Lucy Lou. It's like, whoa, whoa. <laughs> just because I'm Asian, that's the best you could do. <laughs> what did she call him? She started calling him like just all random the, white dude, like Bob Barker or some yeah. shit. Like, it, was, it was funny. <laughs> it was goofy, but the rice thing that that it caught me off guard. I wasn't expecting him to make a joke like that. And that made me laugh more than anything else so far. I was like watching it. I was like, yeah, I like your noodles though. Rice based, nice and light. I do like your people's noodles. You got that. Rice based, not heavy on the carbs like the wops. <laughs> the rice, <laughs> true. They're good. <laughs> totally. I love Chinese noodles. They're the best. <laughs> There's a glimmer of hope for this guy then, right? He's yeah. not completely racist. As long as he's going out to get dinner. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> All right, what happens next? I'm not eating nothing unless an American made it. <laughs> Give me some French fries. Wait a second. French! <laughs> I hate them sons of bitches. Goddamn weak ass French. Potatoes come from Irish people. I hate them too. <laughs> Oh, wow. This drink really hits you. All right. What it's happens good, next? It's good, right? <laughs> yeah. I finished it's, mine already. It's okay. It's <laughs> shut the hell up, dude. <laughs> Take another right. shot. Slide that over here, daddy. Let's, no, let's, get, going. let's get going. Let's get going. All right. So right. meanwhile, Mern meets with a mysterious man named Locke, whom he seems to have a history with. Locke was sent by Waller to help the team out. Partner. Oh, that dude. Okay. Yeah, he's in like all the sci-fi shows. He's a super famous. Yeah, he, he was in Hell on Wheels. Yeah. He was in Stargate Atlantis. Like, like he shows up in a lot of stuff, this yeah. actor. He's a good actor. Right, he's cool. no Brian Thompson, but you know. Who is? <laughs> really? <laughs> I know. Yeah, continue. Go ahead. All right. So on their second outing as a team, Project Butterfly heads to the Glan Thai Bottling Company. And on the way there, Peacemaker finds out that Die Beard is a fan of the band Hanoi Rocks and begins to think Die Beard isn't as lame as he seems. I mean, who isn't a fan of Hanoi Rocks, right? I don't know who that is. Of course you don't. <laughs> <laughs> no idea what that reference meant. <laughs> I got an 11th Street children tattoo, too. <laughs> And well, it, was, it was just kind of funny because, like, you know, the Peacemaker is rocking out mm -hmm. and um, Harcourt is next to him. And she's like, can you shut that shit off? And he's like, oh, what, do you, what else do you want to listen to? Poison? And she's like, are those men? <laughs> <laughs> I'm still looking at the cover. Le Leota was like, can we listen to some jazz? Jazz. I listen to Vigilante's quiet farts back there in jazz. <laughs> and, and then he starts, like, do, doing the... <laughs> Was that jazz? <laughs> <laughs> it's way he's, funnier talking about it. He's not wrong. I didn't <laughs> laugh when I watched this scene, but now thinking about it, God damn it! That's, that's yeah, I feel shit. like I've been on this road trip with these friends before. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it, like Economo shows like he's got like a tattoo from like the first Hanoi Rock show, <laughs> and like all of a sudden, I've got, I got this on my summer abroad. <laughs> <laughs> Peacemaker all of a sudden has like newfound respect for me. He's like, oh, okay. Yeah, they, yeah. they had a best friend moment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's funny. All right, so uh, kiss by the end. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, when they arrive at the Glam Thai factory, the team splits up with Peacemaker and Leota going through the front door, and Harcourt and Vigilante going through the back. Economos stays in the surveillance van. Before heading in, Vigilante laments that he can't bring a chainsaw with him as his weapon of choice. After entering the building, Peacemaker uses his helmet with the X-ray vision to find everyone inside is a butterfly, and he begins killing everyone immediately. Yes. Harcourt and Vigilante discover that the warehouse is full of amber butterfly food, enough to feed millions of the aliens. Millions! This is what I freaking loved about this scene. That was great. Is this is what I was missing in the first three episodes? Well, one of the reasons why I hated the first three episodes is because he, Peacemaker's a complete buffoon. He wasn't even capable of doing his own job. Mm -hmm. This episode, he's a buffoon, but then when shit goes down and he needs to do his job, he's freaking on it, man. He's blowing mm -hmm. people away, one shot head, head kills. It's freaking awesome. Yeah, I had so he, much fun watching he, him do this. He just needed his uh, x ray helmet yeah. to, to be able to sort out who's the good guys and who's the bad guys. That's a, it's a dope scene. I'm glad he yeah. has all, the, all of the. Gadgets and shit? Or? All of the helmets to choose from. Oh, yeah. Well, did, was she like, um, Leota asked him about the helmet, right? Uh huh. He's like, he didn't answer her. Like, he oh, didn't no. want to tell her it was it's X ray. Like an no, he did. Secret. He goes, X ray vision helmet. Did he say that? Yeah, I think so. I think he said something yeah, about yeah, it. Oh, okay. Because he? he's like, activate X ray vision. Mm -hmm. And she's like, just play it cool. And he just starts blowing people oh, away. Yeah. yeah. Okay, bah, bah. She's like, holy shit. She's like, how about a little communication? <laughs> right? And he's like, no time for that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. She, she, she's like, you know, why, why are you killing all these people? He's like, I got my X ray vision on. Yeah. I can see the butterflies in their brains. Yeah. It was a great effect, too. Like, visually, it was a lot of fun to watch. But um, a great moment, too, is at the end. She's like, would you calm down? He's like, I'm calm. You said you were going to be chill. Do I not look chill to you right now? <laughs> I'm good. Yeah. I'm, com I'm completely calm. Murder was, relaxes me. Yeah, it was. You know, it was just a really fun scene, and I love like you can make him a complete buffoon in some aspects, especially like with social uh, mm -hmm. awkwardness and stuff like that. But like when it's come down to murder, the dude better be good at his job, mm -hmm. and that's what I liked about seeing. Well, it was funny because wasn't Harcourt giving him a hard time about his weapon of choice, and and he, and he said something about finger banging. I finger bang you. No, use my pinky. <laughs> and uh, and uh, they, they turned it into this whole thing about... They were just saying that because lesbians don't finger bang. We finger bang more than the rest of the world combined. 
That's <laughs> such an awkward conversation to have. Uh, anyway, I had a lot of fun with this scene. Great seeing Peacemaker do this. I, I also love how Peacemaker believes Google above anyone else's lived experience. Yeah, do you know more than Google? <laughs> <laughs> like, well. <laughs> I mean, we all kind of like just Google stuff. We Google right? everything, right? Yeah. yeah. And Vigilante's disappointment that they wouldn't let him bring the chainsaw. He's just like, yeah, that was funny. I liked, I, I didn't think that was that funny then, but when they, it came back around at the end of the episode, I was like, okay, that's because he was all like, damn it, man, he stole my idea. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll get there though. Go ahead, Katish. <laughs> all right. Soon the team is discovered and the butterflies all start attacking them, cornering, cornering them in the back room. However, the room contains a butterfly infected gorilla named Charlie who kicks all their butts and is about to kill Peacemaker when Dye Beard shows up with a chainsaw and kills the gorilla in the most gruesome way possible. The team then leaves celebrating their victory and Harcourt snaps a picture of the group having their first success. I thought you were gonna make a big deal about the gorilla. <laughs> There's like so much that happened during that scene. Like when they were, the butterflies were all like kind of zombified up against the wall and they're freaking banging on mm -hmm. it and they're all scared and shit and peacemaker pulls out like a russian freaking missile a missile and, missile that he attached and, a grenade and, like, to duct tapes a, a grenade yeah. to it and then he throws it and she's like what are you doing he's like <laughs> get away it's gonna blow up <laughs> we're gonna use this thing <laughs> and that was I'm a good just doing some murder yeah that was a good he, moment he had like a special name for it too right yeah like, i can't like, remember like, what it was like, like his peace grenade or something, yeah. something like, like that. bazooka of peace <laughs> <laughs> and it, it, it is like a rocket launcher like head yeah with a grenade duct taped it was it was a really funny moment i thought you were going to pay more attention to it or uh, uh, talk about it more in your synopsis but uh that Please was a great moment to. and then the freaking I, I don't know anybody else freaking shocked to see a giant talking gorilla in the scene well they set that up in the previous episode because Wait, they talk we, about a gorilla right well, well no the uh one of the guards when vigilante gets arrested when he tries to assassinate peacemaker's father mm -hmm. was reading a newspaper that had on its front page uh, a story about a gorilla that was like That's rampaging. That's right. Yeah. I didn't Whoa. catch that. Clever. Yeah, and there was there was people tricky, online. Tricky. They were extrapolating that they might bring Gorilla Grodd or something. I was in. gonna say, is that who that was in this? I no, don't know. His don't name was so. Charlie. Charlie. <laughs> this was a, uh, a gorilla that got okay. orificed. And uh, is it like a wink and a nod to got, that though? He got orificed. Think? Is that is that yeah. what we're? Yeah, orifice. yeah. yeah. orifice. And he um, was totally orificed. <clears throat> and um, penetrated. Yeah, I, th I think the uh, him being able to talk and stuff was the uh, the. The butterfly, butterfly yeah it. yeah for sure I, I thought it was a wink and a nod to that to the comic book character. i did too to the and, start. But, and i honestly thought it might have been that character mm -hmm. like that's how they were going to justify it but then when they chopped him up with a chainsaw i was like oh okay yeah, it's probably not probably not mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> it went right through the chest yep it was pretty gnarly it was it was way did not expect that to happen I had a lot of fun watching it you seem like you're just like Oh, the gin hit him. Yeah. Finally. You okay there? But you're staring yeah. at me like you're looking through a freaking window. Am right I? Now. I'm sorry. I'm not meaning to. He's got <laughs> glassy eyes. He does. There. He's just like, yeah. Well, I took yeah. I, I took two shots of Tito's before we came down here. Yeah, plus you, this drink, this up. maple syrup. It's like you thing. know what the Peace Master drink <laughs> made me feel really chill. <laughs> Do I not look chill to you right now? All right, let's talk about the little the bit of friendship, some camaraderie that's beginning to form with this crew. Um, it was a nice moment. The little, the little selfie thing that yeah. she took. I was like, okay, this is starting to grow. What is this, episode five? Do we have four or five more to go? Two is more. Just two more? That's what? it? No. No, no there, there, are, there are eight or ten. Oh, I forget. Okay. 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 Anyway, so I'm, I'm glad that this is like a mid-season point where the crew has kind of like come together. They've all learned to work with each other. They like each other finally. So I'm hoping we can... I'm not expecting them to get away from like the constant bickering. That's kind of like a staple for this show, I think. But I hope that they go forward as like a, a group. It was kind of interesting to see Harcourt kind of like, you know, not be so so hardcore. Hardcore, yeah. Like <laughs> like, like she was actually kind of touched at mm -hmm. the the camaraderie that was uh yeah. that was showing us. Like we're turning into a team here. Yeah, it's good stuff. Go ahead. Season one is eight episodes. That's it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's like two more. So yeah. I was right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Suck it. Yes, That's everyone seven. saw you. Season right. two more is, is seven episodes. So three, three episodes more. left. Yeah. Okay. Uh, they don't have as much time. All right, as I Mr. Technical. Right. Well, I, guess, I guess I was wrong. Mr. Honey, it's math. Just, it's just math. <laughs> How Mr. dare you use math, Mr. O? Arithmetic. <laughs> Though we're using weapons. <laughs> I math. challenge you to a home game. Yeah. I'll meet you in the boys' <laughs> locker room. Okay. Like, you will lose, guys. sir. No, I'm the one that's gonna lose. <laughs> <laughs> what you're going to? I'm no, because if he wins home game, oh. he gets me. <laughs> we, we all know I'm. Winning. Okay. It's going to be an Eastern Promises style rumble. <laughs> Just make it in the locker room. 
<laughs> Next episode. <laughs> okay. Is there anything else that happens, Katie? Just... Of course there's stuff that happens. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> so back in prison, the white dragon is still being framed for the crime at the apartment building, and it seems Song's new evidence has been altered to preserve the frame job. When she goes to her superior to protest this development, she discovers her captain has been replaced by Mern's friend Locke, who dismisses her complaints. This prompts Detective Song to go to her uncle, Judge Judy, <laughs> to get a warrant so she can find evidence tying Peacemaker to the crime his father is being framed for. Um, so who was, who hired the freaking fake sheriff guy? Was it, it was Mern, right? Well, Waller, Amanda Waller sent him to help out Mern. And so Mern, knowing that their cover for the frame up mm -hmm. has been compromised, sent him in there to take over. And now he's running cover for Project Butterfly as the head of the police department. department. Police department. department. Yeah. Um, very covert, interesting stuff. I'm wondering what I still. What's Mern's deal? Mm -hmm. He's a butterfly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's working well against we're, we're, the butterfly. We're going to get to that. Well, oh, we okay. got to that at the end of the last episode. Yeah, we all know he's knows. a butterfly. I'm just speculating like what his motivation is for this. Like, I have what, no idea. What, it's weird, going? right? It is very weird. Well, the the next episode I think is going to be Mern centric, so we'll probably find out in next episode. All right, cool. So there's a big finale that happens. Go ahead, Katie. Merton gives his team the night off and they all go out to celebrate. Harcourt sends them the picture she took in a group text and it kind of feels like the team is starting to come together. Leota drives Peacemaker back to his home and while he, she's chilling out with him, she takes the diary that Amanda Waller referenced earlier and hides it at his place. Feeling a little guilty about whatever it was she planted at Peacemaker's pad, Leota goes back to Project Butterfly headquarters where Mern is working late. While there, she tries on Peacemaker's helmet and uses its x-ray vision to discover Mern is a butterfly. Mern, realizing he's been discovered, attacks Leota and looks like he's about to kill her when the episode ends. Sweet. <laughs> Stay salty, my friends. All right, guys, that's it for the episode. <laughs> no, uh, it was, it's cool. I'm glad that they didn't tag this, like, draw this out too much. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, Mern's a freaking secret butter. No, they're just like, boom, okay. One mm -hmm. episode, we got, last episode, we yeah, found out he was we one. We found out. This episode, shit hits the fan. Yeah. Now Thank other you. people are finding out. Yeah. Now we're going to fucking deal with it. Thank next you. Episode. I'm so glad they didn't, like, draw it out as some bullshit. Yeah, please don't make me go, like, three more episodes right. being like, this is fucking butter. Yeah, right? Thank yeah. you. Like, exactly. What are you doing? What do you, what do you think his deal is? <laughs> You're so dumb. I don't know. I want to talk about that. That's the biggest thing for me is like, why is Mern seemingly working against the butterflies? My theory is that there's two different factions of butterflies. I mean, like red wings and blue wings or some it's shit like that. really fucking complicated. <sighs> well, also, the, the goth fly um, drew like the peace symbol to try to communicate with a peacemaker. So um, eventually he's going to end up talking to or like Peacemaker is going to have the goth fly take over someone else. And so he can talk to him or something like that. What if he lets it fly up his butt? I was literally about to just say that. <laughs> what if he lets the butterfly go into an orifice and then like yeah. talk to his brain? Yeah. Or, or maybe that's how Peacemaker ends up getting superpowers because they establish that once the butterfly is in you, it releases these chemicals that enhance your strength and speed and all this other stuff. I don't think I'd like that. You don't want him to be superpowered? I don't want him to be a butterfly. But... Butterfly. Butterfly. Oh, God. What if that's like Orifice. the code? That's funny. He's, he got that's Orifice. Funny. We got to kill him. It's literally a butterfly. Mm. <laughs> okay. Um, you use the yak butter to... To lube it up a yeah. little bit so it slides in nice and easy. That's why he's got so much yak butter <laughs> in, his, in his little trailer. Oh, well, well, it was funny because like Harcourt was, was like, you know, like... Like, you can't go to the brain through the small intestine. You know? So it was like, what? It's an orifice. It's an orifice, man. Um, I don't know. What do you think? What do you think Mern's deal is, man? I have no clue, dude. He's, I don't, I don't know. It's weird because he's trying to kill all these other butterflies. Right. And he's obviously working with the government. So, But I, I don't know. I really don't know. Okay. Do you, do you have any theories? I'm so confused. Uh, me too. <laughs> okay. I mean, the only thing I can think of is that Mern is like, the one butterfly who's like, no, this is a bad idea, and we got to keep the butterflies from taking over. Like mm -hmm. he loves humans or something, but that's lame, and and I don't think that that is what is happening. I'm okay. kind of starting to wonder if uh, what's what's the the big black chick's name? Leota. Leota. I wonder, I don't buy I'm, you. I'm, I'm starting to wonder if her mom from the movies Waller Waller is not a butterfly. I think she's a butterfly. She, I think she could be a butterfly. She's a I think, I think this. I think this thing goes up. The, the chain. Mm. I want to know why they had to plant a fake diary of yeah. peacemakers. Because they're trying place. to frame him. 
There's oh. probably some incriminating stuff in the diary. The is were, that diary peacemakers? No, like it's, it's, fake. A, it's a fake. Waller made it. No, no, no. It. But like, is it supposed to be? A yeah, diary yeah, it, that Peacemaker wrote? Yeah, like, like if you looked at the cover, it said like Peacemaker's diary. Mm -hmm. Oh, like, it did? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't catch that. Mm -hmm. I had like shit all over it in the cover. Like drawings and stuff. Mm -hmm. Terrible doves. Yeah. But, <laughs> <laughs> but I, I think Mern might be like a special case where like he was like so like he, he was like such a control freak as a mercenary that uh, the melding of the butterfly like he might still be in control but he like has like some type of like weird symbiotic relationship with the butterfly mm. where he's not completely taken over or something like that interesting mm. what if peacemaker unleashes his butterfly friend into Mern and the two butterflies fight over in, control in, inside the body inside Mern's body and it just like starts ripping them apart and there's mm -hmm. like little fists getting punched out of his nipples <laughs> yeah. and shit yeah. yeah and then like blood flies out of his eye right yeah, yeah. okay I'm his down. eye goes like Brown. like a cartoon yeah <laughs> <laughs> all right uh no judo master in this episode no is he dead he got shot in the chest no, but they kept him alive right no, no he, like he moved his he swapped his heart with his kidney like martial arts experts do you know? mm -hmm. surprised they didn't even mention him they really didn't, did they? Not a single word. Maybe they got him stuffed in the refrigerator or something. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's still on the couch, like with the IV or yeah. something like that. Eating chips. You know? Yeah. <laughs> I can go for some chips right now. Uh, all right. Any other are, thoughts on this episode? Those fiery hot. Uh, yeah. What were they made Cheetos. of? <laughs> those Cheetos. Things, Cheetos. Those things make yeah. your orifices burn too, man. I'll tell they you do. what. Mm -hmm. oh, it man, wards you... off butterflies. <laughs> you know, the orifices you make... are on fire. <laughs> Is hot sauce the answer? <laughs> it is the answer. I fell into a burning ring of fire. Johnny Cash oh. said it first. Oh, uh, yeah. I went down to Johnny Cash rabbit hole this week. Did weird. you? Yeah. Like, watch, like, walk the no, line. No, I was on shit? Spotify and I went, play Johnny Cash. Oh, nice. Neat. And then, he's, yeah, it was, it was good. I, I, that, if you know me at all, that's a weird place for me to go. He's a regular on my yeah. Pandora playlist. Yeah. I don't know why we're talking about this. Any, anything either. else on Peacemaker? Final thoughts. You still listen to Pandora. Yeah, what else do you listen Who to? Who the fuck listens to Pandora? I don't know. I do. No judgment. I'm just No, I'm <laughs> judging. Surprised. I'm judging them hard right now. Spotify, sir. Is it is it better? That's it's been, much yeah, better. Yeah, okay. Pandora's kind of vintage. Yeah, it's kind of also <laughs> 10 years ago. Vintage. <laughs> so like oh, hey, hey, if you want to listen to Neil Young, Pandora's the place to do it. Yeah. I, no, I don't know. You have no, no control over what you listen to. None. It's like a it's like a shuffle, you know? You just put put the thing on shuffle and go for it. Like listen I, to a radio station. I am, I go from, I am getting to know a whole new you. I, I go know, from dude. like like Willie Nelson to freaking Three Days Grace, and listen, then he, I, he listens to Pandora and listen watches sequels first. I, it's, I it's actually want to make a, a playlist on Spotify from all the rock songs from Peacemaker That'd because be they're dope. all awesome. I'm, yeah, I guarantee you it's already been done. I hope so. Don't take the wind out of the I'll, I'll search it. <laughs> Add one more thing for him to do. What? Make a playlist. Oh, he about finds plenty Maker. of things for himself to do. Jesus, this fucking guy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, final thoughts on Peacemaker episode five. Go ahead, Vader. Uh, still in, still interested. That's a fun show. I'm laughing. I'm having a good time. I, okay. I don't know what else you want me to say. I, that's not. That's it. That's yeah. all your, your your job is done. Good okay, job. good. <laughs> Jude, what, <laughs> final thoughts. Stand down, sir. <laughs> I'm, I'm down. <laughs> I'm completely calm. That's it. Fuck you guys. I'm out of here. <laughs> He's over, he's over there sharpening a Son knife on a piece of, of leather. I'm completely calm. What's the matter with you guys? This is what I do to relax. <laughs> <laughs> still in, still like it. Uh, I think it's really fun and funny, and and I looked for I look forward to like every week when a new episode is out. Okay, Kadesh, I'm digging this show. Let, previous episode I didn't think was all that great. Um, it was probably my least favorite of the series so far. This one, we're back on track. Got more crazy James Gunn stuff with like a killer gorilla running around and the plot kind of thickens on all the different fronts. And um, I'm just, I'm I'm enjoying the show because it's just enjoyable. It's funny. Yeah. And it's my type of humor. And I love it when like they stretch out the jokes for too long mm -hmm. and, and it, it becomes awkward and then becomes funny again. So it, th this really is my type of show. And I'm looking forward to the next episode where I think we're finally going to get some answers out of Mern regarding like the butterfly invasion. Right on. Uh, this is, I didn't enjoy watching this episode, but I enjoyed it way more now that we've talked about it. Like when I watched it, I was like, okay, it's more that it's Kadish's type of humor is not my type of humor. So like those overextended laugh track <laughs> moments, I'm just like, oh God, can we just move on please? Mm -hmm. 
But talking about it with you guys is way better, especially with a little bit of social lubricant. Mm -hmm. um, you know, what's really jarring is when you watch the episode with Kadish and he's like laughing out loud. <laughs> I don't know if I could do that. <laughs> or fucks not. me up every time. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, that's it for our episode five of Peacemaker. Thank you guys for joining us. Don't forget to like and comment on this video. Let us know what you thought of this episode. And uh, if you're new here, please subscribe. And we have a ton of content hitting the YouTube right now. So I hope you guys enjoy that. Uh, Pendulum, where can they find you on the social medias? <laughs> boom, boom. Come on, man. It's a locker room joke from like 10 minutes ago. It was stupid. Tell people where they can find your forearm. <laughs> <laughs> You can find me at Matt Vader 74 on the, uh, <laughs> on the YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, and, uh, the other ones. I'm going to make him a shirt that just says grandfather. Clock. <laughs> <laughs> Do it. <laughs> Jude, where can they find you? You can find me at I am Jude Juju on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. And you can check out my webpage, the voice of Jude.com or and or you can check out our Facebook page, Salty Nerd Podcast on Facebook. Right on. Matthew Kadish. You can find me at Matthew Kadish, K-A-D-I-S-H on Twitter. Kadishbooks.com will take you to my Amazon page. And if you could go to saltynerd.com forward slash rate and leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcast, we'd really appreciate it because we're trying to get 200 five-star ratings so that we can be officially recognized by Rotten Tomatoes as an accredited movie review show. We're going, we're diving into the deep state of Rotten Tomatoes and we're going to try and skew those numbers a little bit. But. We're going to orifice them. <laughs> oh, like a butterfly. Yeah, we're totally orificing <laughs> Rotten Tomatoes. <laughs> yeah. We're going to sneak our way in there and change those ratings. <laughs> Through their buttholes. <laughs> Rotten Tomatoes, big old red butthole. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, guys. Operation Ring of Fire. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta shove a bunch of hot Cheetos down their gullet. It's gonna be great. It's really gonna hurt. <laughs> Operation Ring of Fire. They'll never see it coming because it's through their buttholes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, sorry. Everybody's okay. dying. I am. We're dying. Whew. All right. <laughs> all right, guys. Head over to our Discord app, saltynerddiscord.com. That's where I hang out with all of our members over there. It's a great community. We have a ton of fun chatting in that chat in the uh, Discord app. So uh, hang out with us over there. And that's it for. Peacemaker. Thank you guys. Stay tuned for next week. And uh, as always, stay salty, my friends. <laughs> <laughs>